Oh, it feels so great to finally share some of the commercial work we do on this channel. While 99% of the videos we film and edit will never be shown here because we don't believe they're worth sharing, I am incredibly proud of what Rainus and I have accomplished with this video. I want to take this opportunity to share my experience working on this project, provide some behind the scenes footage and offer useful tips and tricks, so yeah, let's get into it. For the first scene, I decided to test the gimbal's performance with the large macro lens. To capture product shots of the Weeble 3S, I mounted the Sony A7S III with the Suray 50mm macro lens on the Weeble 3S, and to my surprise, the Weeble 3S handled it like a champ. I was able to capture fantastic product shots. After that, I needed to capture clean and simple shots of Annie assembling the gimbal, although I didn't really use them in the final edit. Lastly, Annie came up with the idea of painting herself to look like a mythical creature, allowing us to capture macro shots of the intricate details on her face. Eyes, lips, flowers, skin, and so on. While sliders are typically used for macro shots, I wanted to show you that you can achieve excellent results with the gimbal as well. And to accomplish this, I set my gimbal settings to be as slow as possible and rotated the Weeble 3S's sling handle sideways for better support. Some shots were actually captured at 50 frames per second, while others were shot at 25 frames per second. I anticipate some people uh, might consider this cheating, but let's be real. Macro shots are challenging even at 50 frames per second due to the extreme sensitivity of the image to even the slightest movement you make. If you want to try this yourself, just make sure to set the gimbal settings to the slowest speed to battle against micro jitters because there will be a lot of them if you're close to your subject. Film at 50 or 100 FPS if possible. This might be weird, but try to do your moves as quickly as possible because somehow the slower you move, the more micro jitters you will notice. Physics, am I right? The second day was a bit messy because we initially planned to film a chasing scene in a forest. However, on the actual day of the shoot, I realized I was craving for something more, something creative and fun. So that's why we decided to go to this non-touristy barricades location in the forest, which was such a fantastic idea because we didn't see a single person out there and had the whole place to ourselves. After warming up by getting some typical B-roll of me assembling the Weeble 3S and getting some running shots, we were ready to whip out the smoke machine and get some moody shots of Annie running around in this cool white dress. And whilst the shots were cool, I wouldn't say that they were anything special. However, once the sun was setting, we decided to quickly use the smoke bombs and get those light rays. I mean, the shots are nice, but they look way better in slow motion. And you know what that means? Cheating! How dare you! And once it got dark, we used the smoke machine to make the scene feel more cinematic. And got a couple of shots of Annie running around and looking at imaginary things once again. 
But this time, the shots turned out awesome and I realized I got what I wanted. When we talk about using gimbals, people mostly imagine filming cars, bikes, chasing fast objects. But in my opinion, it often takes just as much skill to capture simple shots. And this is why I am extremely happy with the results this day, because all these simple shots turned out great. I got a lot of moody portrait shots, close-ups and some chasing shots as well. Here's what I've learned about gimbals in the last year or two. I bet many people look at the Weeble 3S's sling handle and ask themselves, what the heck is this? That looks like such a cheap handle. Whilst it's not the most glamorous handle, let me show you why Julian made a fantastic choice designing it this way. When you're running around with the gimbal in briefcase mode, since the handle is so light, you can basically kind of let it float in your hand instead of tightly gripping it. This helps remove unnecessary vibrations and you won't believe how smooth the footage can be this way. All the shots I just showed you were captured this way and no post stabilization was added here. Pretty neat if I do say so myself. Third day was an exhausting one. Elvis and I woke up early to shoot a music video. This video wasn't for Julian, but I decided to take this opportunity to help out Elvis by getting him some additional shots, get a little bit of footage with the Weeble 3S combined with the Sony A7S III and Sure anamorphic lenses, which Honestly, I thought it won't be able to handle, but this tiny gimbal held the setup with an ease and I was able to fully balance all four axes. Anyway, I ended up only putting a couple of shots in the final commercial because I felt like it didn't really fit in, but it doesn't matter because at least I helped out my friend Elvis and spent half of the day working for exposure. And later that evening we had to drive to a different city to film motorbikes. I had never shot this activity, so it was rather exciting. Our main talent, Girtz, whom I found on Instagram, was such a blast to work with and helped us get incredible footage. The weather was nice, clouds were great, the bike looked fantastic, everything went super smooth and within the first 60 minutes I already could feel that we had enough footage to make the scene work. And I also basically overused the sling handle in briefcase mode to get smooth footage and in some scenes I even disassembled the setup and ran with the gimbal without the wrist support or the sling handle. And whilst the footage was definitely not as smooth as it would be with the sling handle attached to it, I still managed to get some usable footage. Also, by the way, a year ago I told Julian that the wrist support is kind of like a gimmick and it doesn't really work. Well, I take my words back. I was so wrong. It helps a ton, not only to get smoother footage, but your wrists will be thankful for it at the end of the day. Fourth day was one of the easiest, rain room. We had already shot here a year ago, so I already knew the best lighting setup and since my girl is a badass dancer, it felt like we're gonna have the easiest shoot day ever. And we did, pro tip. If you're filming rain and want to achieve the effect where the rain is visible in your frame, it, it kinda looks like it glows and and has like an outline to it, just put one or two lights in the back and light up your subject that way. The droplets will be very pronounced and visible from all angles. You're welcome. And then we use the built-in light on the Weeble 3S as a key light. Is this the best light ever? Nope. Does it do the job? Most definitely. It's a feature you probably won't use a lot, however, in this specific situation this feature helped us get clean frontal shots of Annie without having to set up another light in front of us. Anyway, super simple scene and the shots we got here made me very happy. Fifth day, horses. This wasn't initially planned, but Annie proposed this idea and I was like, you know what, why not? And some of the shots we got there were awesome. I don't really have a lot of behind the scenes footage because I hired a guy who didn't know at the time that either his Sony a7 IV or Sigma 24-70 was doing some funny things with the autofocus and uh, most shots turned out blurry so hopefully he'll be able to solve that problem but anyway I just needed two or three good shots and we got those so I'm happy. Once again the briefcase mode on the Weeble 3S worked wonders in this scene. Also if you want to get the smoothest results chasing your subject put the gimbal in lock mode so the gimbal doesn't do any unnecessary micro jitters sideways. And yes, I was running on sand here, so to get this kind of smooth footage without any post stabilization, quite impressive. Sixth day was also quite a simple one. My main goal was to get more technical b-roll shots of the gimbal itself, the Mola 6100 lights, as well as the portrait mode on the Weeble 3S. As you can see by the shots, the scenes are simple, and by combining Molus lights with the Weeble 3S, I managed to get this clean shot of Annie with the Sony 85mm lens. 
This is what I'm talking about. You simply need to find the best gimbal settings that work for you, because I doubt that you're gonna be able to get smooth telephoto shots with the default settings on the gimbal. In my opinion, one of the most important settings you need to change at the very beginning is the dead band. That basically determines when the gimbal will start moving after you twist the handle. If the dead band is set to low values, then your gimbal will feel very responsive and you'll feel the gimbal reacting to the smallest movements you make. However, if your deadband settings are set to high values, your gimbal will feel less responsive. And that is exactly what you want when using telephoto lenses, meaning you won't see as many micro jitters when you mess up your movement. Seven, seven day? Seven day was the day I was most excited for because I managed to get a hold of this one army guy who had incredible equipment. And Rainus also gave me contacts to this huge abandoned facility where you can basically film anything you want. I didn't even care about the technical parts of the commercial here, I just wanted to get some dope shots and that is exactly what we did. The army guy, combined with the atmosphere of the location, the smoke, the equipment, oh man. These shots made me so damn happy. And this is also where we got the ending shot of the commercial, which is uh, something a lot of people told me they really liked. Good idea, Reynus. There's not really much to say here, apart from the fact that the footage is incredible. And that wraps up the filming part. Editing was a lot more difficult uh, due to the fact that I had to make two versions of the commercial and the deadline for the first version was 9th of May. So with the huge amount of footage I had to deal with, I can tell you that I did in fact not enjoy myself. However, I had a lot of time with the other version that you saw at the beginning of the video and to make it even better, I asked Rainus to do the sound design for it as he's much better at that. Thanks, babe. All in all, this was an incredible experience. I didn't really like how the We Build 3 commercial turned out last year, so I had to redeem myself and final product is something I am extremely proud of. There are many things I've learned over the last two years when creating commercials, but one of the most important lessons from me would be do not forget to capture the details. I often see people forgetting the close-ups, macro shots on products, and those are the type of shots that will help the viewer connect to the product most. Oh, and uh, one more tip. Make sure to get all the wides and mediums first and only then get to the close-ups, because once you have prepared everything for the wide shots, then close-ups will be rather easy to manage. If you try to do things the other way around, most of the times it will get messy. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this long BTS video and hopefully you're having an amazing day. Oh, I haven't said these words in a while. You know the drill. Peace out.